Welcome to the Sales Influence Podcast, where we talk about finding the why and how people buy. I'm your host, Victor Antonio. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for lending me those lovely ears. Continuing our price increase conversation, tactic number three is anchoring. Ooh, that's a good topic, anchoring. Now, anchoring is another socialization type of method. You're conditioning the buyer, but this time you're dropping an anchor. No, not that type of anchor. We're talking a reference point mental anchor. So for example, if you begin to mention to customers, instead of the drip method, which I mentioned in the last one, this time you say, look, what we're looking at is a possible 15% increase in our next pricing cycle, Mr. Customer. So in other words, at the beginning of the year, our prices, what we're estimating, are gonna go up 15%. So please, Mr. Customer, budget for that. Customer's gonna freak out, what, 15%? Are you kidding me? But again, they'll get used to it. You gave them a number 15%. Then, as the year rolls to a close and a stop, you say, hey, here comes the new pricing, but now when you drop the new pricing, it's not a 15% increase, it's only 10%. At this point, the customer feels a sense of relief, like, whew, whoa, 5% discount, that's how they're gonna view it. Again, by anchoring them high at 15% and then dropping it down to 10%, the customer will feel a sense of relief. Now, this doesn't work the other way, of course. If you say 10% with the anchor, then you raise it to 15, you're gonna freak them out a bit. So again, if you have an idea of where you believe that the price is gonna land in terms of percentage increase, maybe bump it up a couple of percentage points, drop that 15%, and then drop the good news with the 10%. And when you do that, again, the customer is more likely to have a positive reaction. Now, does this anchoring technique work? The answer is yes. Yes. That's how Jim Rohn would say it, by the way. Yes, of course it works. How do I know? Because my wife, again, uses it on me all the time. She uses the strategy. Here's what she did. Remember that vacation I talked about? Well, then she got around to this pricing. By the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about, listen to the previous podcast. So anyway, so now she says, I found the ideal vacation for us as a family. Me, her, and the two kids. She goes, look, here's the deal. We fly to Barcelona. From Barcelona, we take a trip. From there, we go to Greece. We go to Italy. You know, we see all these wonderful countries. And the first question I'm asking was, well, how much is this going to cost? Like, how much? She says, $4,000 a piece. And I'm like, $4,000 for all of us? She goes, no, no, a piece. So that's $16,000. To which I said, I'm not paying $16,000. There's no way we're spending $16,000 on a vacation. She says, fine, why don't we just do the Caribbean? It's only $2,500 per, which is only $10,000. I said, yeah, let's do that. Now, what did she do there? See, she set me up with the $4,000 per, which is sixteen. dollars When I rejected that offer, I went, and when she went down to 10, I'm like, okay, I'm getting a bargain. This is the anchoring effect. It's almost like the door in the face strategy. Give them a high number first. When they yell or scream, you drop the number down. So again, the anchoring effect is very powerful because again, what you're doing is you're setting a high metric and then knowingly, you're gonna come in later on with a lower number. Now, some people say, Was that, is that manipulation? No, the answer, it's not. So for example, Let's say that you know you have to raise prices at the end of the year. You know you have to raise prices, right? You just know you have to. So what you do is with your accountants, with your manufacturing operations people, with your CFO, you guesstimate at what you think the increase is gonna be. And let's say you think it's gonna be at 15%, right? 15%. And again, you have a discussion with your team that says, look, if we tell our customer 15% and it comes in higher, that's gonna be a problem. So why don't we add a few percentage points in case? So you can add 5%, right? And again, when the numbers finally come in and you can go down on the price after you've anchored the customer, that's always gonna be a positive. It's not about manipulation. It's really about understanding human nature. And if you know, or better yet, since you don't know what the increase is gonna be, better to err on the side of going high rather than being too low on the price increase. So keep that in mind. The anchoring effect is very powerful 
if you use it correctly. And that is it for the Sales Influence Podcast. Leave me some feedback on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Pandora, Spotify, or wherever you're listening. Love to get your feedback on this strategy. And after you do that, check out the Sales Velocity Academy. Again, we're adding some great courses. Every month, we're adding new courses to help you sell more faster. Go to salesvelocityacademy.com. And on that note, this is Victor Antonio, always reminding you, selenate hard when you know how. Take care. Hi, I'm Victor Antonio. I'm an author, sales trainer, and keynote speaker. I'm often asked, what makes a great speaker? Is it someone who delivers real content that the audience can use? Is it someone who engages the audience so they're part of the learning experience? Or is it someone who can motivate an audience to push them beyond their comfort zone and discover new abilities? The answer is yes. But the most important thing to remember is that I'm not there to look good. I'm there to make my client look good. Simply put, it's never about me and it's always about them.